time. You know, historically, uh, winter time was sort of time for for Indians way back then. But I do it all year round because uh, a lot a lot of people are here in the summertime, but they're not here in the winter time. So. I got, a, got the okay from one of the elders to do it in the summertime also. The house that I live in, I'm buying it, and that was my house that I was born and raised in. And all I have to do is sit there by the window where my grandfather sat, and the stories come to me. This one is about the dog, and this is about the creation of the dog. The first dog, first dog. Uh, so one day, the creator was. Creator says, uh, "He's taking the dog. He's molding it, and he already had made some other animals. But this dog, uh, he was molding it, and, and and he told the dog, "I'm going to make you different from the other animals." And uh, the dog looked at him, he says, well, what do you mean? He says, well, so everybody will know what you're all about, what, what you're about. And so I said, okay, so he molded him, put his, put his legs on his nose on him, and, and the dog just noticed there was a cat walked by, and the cat had a nice long tail. And the dog says, you going to give me a tail like that? Yeah. He says, only you're going to be different. You know, how am I going to be different? He says, well, he says, the animals, someday they're going to be used for something else, he says. And he says, well, what's that? He says, well, one of these times, he says, and he says, I'm going to run out of making animals, so I'm going to have to make something else. And he says, what's that? He says, oh, it's going to be called a thing, a van. And he says, and they're going to be higher than you. You're going to have to respect, respect that man because he's going to take care of you. And he, he said, well, what do I need taken care of? He says, well, he says, you need... You need to be fed, you need a place to live. And he, he said, well, what do you mean? He says, no, I can do all of that. Well, he said, not, not, not this. He says, well, he said, what's that? He says, I'm going to make you without so your tail, so you can take your tail off. And, and the, because when you become a pet to that man and they're going to learn to respect you. when they take their they take their hat off they're going to have to take their hat off to respect the people's house and so you're going to be different from the other animals so when you're you're going to be living in the house so you're going to have to take your tail off and put it on a hook a hanger and he said uh he said, well, he says, I guess so. He says, well, yeah, I guess so. He says, that's what you're going to be. So you're going to have to respect those people. And so, so he made, made the dog fed tail. And later on, he made the female. She was the same way. And they became uh, friends. They had a family pretty soon. Families all over, dogs all over, and they were had the tails, take their tails off. So, one time, down in a village, something happened. It wasn't going right. So back then, they, those animals would have meetings together. And if something went wrong in the village, they, they'd have a meeting and they'd find out what was the matter and settle it. So this, 
they tried to settle it and they couldn't settle it. And so they called a, a meeting down into the lodge, big long lodge. And when they went in the door, sure enough, there was all these pegs. <laughs> and there wasn't any back door, all this door. So the, pretty soon the lodge was full of dogs. Just a whole bunch of dogs, I can, and all these, all these tails on the wall. The meeting was going pretty good, and got, it was getting pretty heated. Heated, and then the, somebody looked in the back, and there was a fire going back there. And one dog jumped up, and he says, "Fire! Fire! Fire!" And all those dogs just began running all over, running, running around, you know. And finally one saw the door in the back. Back was open and they all headed out the door and each one, as each one went out the door, they grabbed the tail, stuck it on there, <laughs> went, went back. And pretty soon they were all out, no tails. And that's why today you see when the dog sees another dog, they're smelling each other. They're still looking for their tail from a long time ago. <laughs> this is how come a woodpecker they are today. By the way, we have woodpecker visits our feeder. He's about a foot and a half tall. Every time that he made something, he'd, he'd put in something special. And it wasn't the woodpecker yet, but in the village, down in the, down the council where the, all the people lived, the people were made by that time, and down in the village where the people lived, there was no lady down there. Oh, she was a grouchy old thing. <laughs> and, uh, Nobody, after a while, everybody was complaining about her. She was always a grouch. And so one time the tribal council, they had enough of it. And long time ago, they used to ban, ban people from their village, the villages. And they, they do that up in Alaska now too. In British Columbia, they do that. And so they banned her. And uh, so she, she went and they took her out in the woods and this is where we're going to stay. Yeah. So Nanabajo one day he was wanting to go for a walk and get some fresh air. And he went to the woods and, and he was walking along like that down, down there. And he saw a fire way up there. And there was a, somebody standing by the fire and this person was taking her apron and fanning a fire, trying to make it go. And he got closer and closer, then he recognized it was that old woman. And he, he thought, she was banished. I wonder if she had learned her lesson yet. And so, remember, he's a magician, so he says, I wonder if she would learn her lesson. I, I'll see. So he went like this to himself. He became a real old man. And he trudged up to the fire up, up near her and she saw him coming. And she says, I wonder who that is, that old man. His old hair was all stringy, hanging down. Tours, his clothes were all holes. And and he got near the fire, near her, and she says, he says, I'm hungry, I'm tired. Can I sit by your fire? The old woman says, no. And he says, but I'm hungry. And just for a minute, she felt sorry for him. And she says, well, I guess you can, she says. I'll, I'll fix you a, a cake of corn, you know, a Johnny cake, you know. 
So she, she stingy, she just uh, fixed a, just a little tiny one put by the fire and she was taking a stick, rolling it around, and baking it, letting it bake, turn it over. And pretty soon she looked at it and it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Pretty soon it was about that big. And she said, oh, that's, I can't get that old man. She says, I'll tell him it fell apart. So she, he grabbed it and stuck it in her apron. She says, he said, that one fell apart. He says, I'll, I'll bake you another one. So the old man says, yeah, I can wait, I can wait. So this time she made a little smaller one. <laughs> and again, did the same thing by the fire, just rolling around. This time it was huge, bigger than the last one. And she, she, again, she hit it. And then I'll fix another one, so I'll fix another one. And just as she was fixing it, going to put it by the fire, she said, oh, what am I doing? She says, I don't even know this old man. She says, she says I shouldn't have to do this. I'm, I'm not going to. She says, she says, old man, go away. She says, I don't have any room for old beggars or any food. Get out of here. And the old man says, I'm hungry. She says, get out of get away from my fire. And so the old man says, well, I guess so, you know. And then suddenly he went like this, and he became Narmbaju again. And the old woman looked at him. Oh, not a Jew, and she knew what he could do. He was a magician. I wonder what he's going to do, she says. And he says, old oh, woman, he says, for you not feeding me, letting me by your fire, he says, you're going to have to suffer the consequences. And he raised his hands, and, and she was standing there, and she had this little red, red head on, a black cape, black, white apron, and down to her moccasins. And so he start raising, he start going like this, and, and finally got down to the ground about that tall. And she looked up at him, she was gonna ask him what, what he was doing, and she couldn't talk. And so the old man looked at her and says, old woman, he says, you're gonna to have to suffer the consequences. So he went like that, and the little red hat she was wearing became red feathers. And this became black, black wings white breast and down, down he went, pssst. even the moccasins became little, little claws, three claws like that. And he says, for you not feeding me, let me warm by your fire. He says, this is your consequences. And as he said that, she flew, flew away, flew to the nearest tree. When she got on that tree, she was hanging on the side of that tree and she was, it was the first, first red-headed woodpecker on Mother Earth. <laughs>